So we've covered a few of the really big popular boots in some of the wars that the US has been involved in over the years, but there's some really unique boots like this Swedish M59 boot that's gained quite the reputation for being one of the best waterproof boots ever made, but also one of the deadliest boots of all time. And thanks to the Iron Snail for sending these to me because he did a video on this, so go check out his video. HelloFresh takes the hassle out of meal time this fall by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and easy to prepare recipes right to your front door. Skip the checkout lines and get outside in the warmer weather because HelloFresh has dinner covered. And these meals are really good because I don't have time to sit down and cook, let alone go to the grocery store. So the fact that they deliver the ingredients you need and not just random deliveries, the exact ingredients at the right proportions with very simple to use little guides. They come straight to your front door, all pre-portioned out in individual bags. So it's very quick, very easy. It only takes about 15 minutes or less to cook them, which is perfect for me because I hate everything about cooking except for the actual cooking. And that's what I enjoy. And it makes it super healthy too because I just order food on delivery apps and takeout and this is 25% cheaper than takeout. It's more healthy than takeout. It's cheaper than even the grocery stores and significantly faster. And every time we do one of these ads, I'm always trying to convince HelloFresh to give me a year supply of HelloFresh. They have yet to do it, but maybe one day. And the last thing I really like about HelloFresh is it does not get stagnant because they have over 40 different recipes and over hundred seasonal and convenient items to choose from each week. And there's tons of different options for different lifestyles and diets. So use the link in my description description or go to hellofresh.com and use the code POGROSEOG50 for 50% off plus free shipping. So click the link in the description or scan the QR code here. And thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. But to understand these boots, we need to go all the way back to the early 1900s in Maine. In 1911, Leon, Leon Wood Bean, AKA L. Bean, wanted to make a hunting boot that would actually keep your feet dry while still being tough enough that you'd hike in for long periods of time, rugged for the outdoors. So what he did is he took a rubber boot cut the top off of it, and then attached a leather boot upper to it. And that is the genesis of the bean boot, also known as duck boots. And then skip forward to World War One around 1914, and every country involved had serious problems keeping water out of their boots, as we learned from the US World War One boot video that we'll, we're gonna repost and add some new additional information to it because YouTube straight up murdered that video. It was the fastest growing video we ever had. I've complained about plenty, but keep a look out for that. But those traditionally made boots were leather boots, and it led to troops being completely decimated by trench foot because leather is not impermeable and water can't help but get into the inside of the boot, which led to trench foot and soldiers' feet were literally melting. Next, in 1939, the Soviet Union invades Sweden's neighbor, Finland, and starts the Winter War. And the, these Nordic countries, being that they're in cold climates and wet climates, they're much better equipped to deal with winter warfare. Whereas the Soviets, as we learned from that Soviet video, they were not equipped for it. Then skip to the mid 1950s because Sweden didn't do in World War II. But after World War II, Sweden saw the need to improve its military gear, starting with the foundation of the soldier, the boot. And they wanted to make a boot that took advantage of the new rubber compounds and new manufacturing technology that was being developed that was suited for all conditions, but especially wet and cold climates of those Nordic countries. So after a few years of work in 1959, the Swedish military releases the M59 boot, which many people think took heavy design inspiration from the LL Bean boot, which is pretty easy to see how they drew those conclusions because it looks just like a bean boot, but on steroids. And then over the next few decades, this boot was not only used by the Swedes, but also the British soldiers in 1982 during the 10 week undeclared war over the Falkland Islands. Because they had boots, they were updated, but they just leaked like a sieve. They caused trench foot, and so these boots were the perfect solution for it. And then in the 1990s, after 30 plus years of military use, the M59 boot was replaced by the more modern M90 boot. And today, these boots are pretty easily available. You can find them on eBay. I think uh, the Iron Snail said he got it for like 20 bucks or something. And so I, I love that history of how a, a US consumer-based design product was part of the inspiration for one of the most successful water-resistant, waterproof boots of any military. So how did they do it? Because you're probably thinking, oh yeah, well, yeah, well what about the leather? It's, it's not waterproof. How'd they solve this issue? The way they solved that was by rubberizing the leather. And the way this is done usually with the top coating of some kind of rubber or plastic on top, especially in the cheap Nike leather that we see on a regular basis, is they just take cheap leather, throw a really heavy coating of some sort of uh, plastic or, or rubber on top, and over time it separates, it splits, it cracks, let the water in. But what makes this unique 
is it's rubberized. So what they've done is they heat up that rubber and they try to infuse it into the leather. So it's not even just a top coat, it's a structural part of the leather. And it's pretty thick too, it's 2.3 millimeters thick and we burned it to see how it reacted and you can see that the way it reacts differently compared to a plastic top coat on a pair of Nikes. It kind of bubbles up and it, it doesn't, you can tell it's infused into the leather. We also did the puncture test, it took 85 pounds to puncture through. So pretty smart and clearly an effective way of getting the flexibility and durability of leather while still making it waterproof. And speaking of waterproof, you really don't get much more waterproof than a rubber booty that's wrapping around the entirety of your foot. But the crazy thing about this rubber vamp is it is so hard. And it's obviously it's aged and rubber gets harder over, over time. But we cut a little slit in it to see if, how thick it was and it was five millimeters thick, which I think they did to keep it really strong and almost to prevent it from being overly flexible because unlike leather, if you bend rubber too much, it will split and crack. So I think they really beefed it up to keep it rigid, but also to keep it durable. But is this boot actually waterproof? You know, it's, it's an older boot and it probably has a few flaws in it, but we dunked it in water for five minutes and it had just tiny leaks in it. And I think all the leaks came from the stitching, which is an inherent flaw to even the LL Bean boots this boot as well, but the nice thing is, all you have to do is have a little bit of wax or a little bit of uh, contact cement and you can put that on the inside and the outside. And that would really make this boot waterproof and it's an older boot, you know, it's, it's decades old. And then if we look at the inside of the boot, pretty basic on the inside, you do have a full lining all the way around the rubber booty part of the boot. But the really interesting thing is, I expected to this to be just rubber all the way through. But if you look at the insole, it's leather, but not only leather, it has a Blake stitch all the way around the insole of the boot, which I did not expect to see because usually you only see this in traditionally made boots, especially not rubber sole boots and rubber vamp boots. So first, why do I like this leather insole? Well, we've talked about it plenty of times on the channel. Leather's really durable. Leather absorbs your sweat. It compresses the shape of your foot, giving you a custom footprint on the inside of your boot, making it very comfortable for marching all day, especially compared to a rubber bottom that you potentially be walking in with this style of boot. But that stitch is really confusing because it makes me wonder how this was made. Because if you flip this over, you don't see those stitches coming out anywhere. You don't see any stitches on the welt. So that makes me think that the way this is built is that rubber booty has the insole on the inside and then that Blake stitch sews together through that leather insole, through the rubber booty, and then through this rubber slip sole, and then the outsole is glued on. And you'd assume that's where the construction of this outsole and these different materials stop. But if you look at the heel, you can see there's little nails in the heel. So pretty clearly this is a nailed on heel and a cool little tidbit about this. You see this little groove in the heel stack right here and how square jawed this, this toe is. That's because these doubled as ski boots. You could actually clip into those old school skis for true winter warfare. But it's a really strange construction because I, most people would assume it would just be full rubber all the way down a single unit, just like the LL Bean boot. But it seems like it's a combination of a traditionally made boot with a rubber boot, which seems to be a really brilliant way of combining some of the best attributes of a leather boot, especially from the, the insole down, with the weather protection and water resistance of a rubber boot and the flexibility of like an L.L. Bean style construction with the leather upper. Because just from what we've seen so far, it really would make this boot an extremely durable, comfortable, marchable boot, and most importantly, you could repair this boot pretty easily. And it makes these boots really puncture resistant, which you would want for warfare because we did the puncture test on it and took 191 pounds of puncture through. So all those additional layers make it a very protective boot. So that's why this boot is so interesting and so unique. And I think that's because it's a very function-based, purpose-built boot for a specific environment across the world. So now let's cut this thing in half and see if there's any other details, see if we got it right. The Iron Snail had some questions about how it was wrapped underneath if it's a single boot. So let's see if there's any other hidden details on the inside of this boot. All right, we got it cut in half, and this thing is even weirder on the inside than I thought. And also subscribe and go check out the Iron Snails video. So now let's see what's inside.
Well, it's not built nearly as much like the bean boot than I expected because you have the steel shank, you have leather underneath the steel shank. Obviously, you have that leather insole with the Blake stitch. You've got a softer rubber underneath that. You've got a rubber filling all the way through. You've got a soft blown rubber heel counter. But more importantly, this rubber booty doesn't wrap all the way underneath your foot like the bean boot does. And we guessed right about this Blake stitch because it does sew the insole, the rubber vamp, and that slip sole together while the outsole is glued on and this heel is nailed on. Those nails don't go all the way to the inside. That Blake stitch is not exposed to the outside. So the sole down construction, there's no way for water to get in. And the only fail point on this boot is that junction between the leather upper and the rubber booty and those seams all the way across the boot. So this boot is even more weird and more unique than I even expect it. So why was this so effective? Well, I've never seen a boot combine two different styles so perfectly to bring the best of both styles into a singular boot that combines all the benefits and value of a traditionally made boot, not just in the upper, but the sole construction with the rubber aspects of a rubber boot without any of the downfalls of it, except for maybe the, the flexibility, you lose a little bit there. But that's unique because usually when you combine two different styles of anything, you lose a little bit of each. It usually does not work out like that Aristotle quote where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, basically, combining the two makes it a better boot for a specific purpose, for cold and wet environments. It doesn't mean this is the ultimate boot, but for its purpose, it's about as good of a boot as you can make. Now I fully understand why these boots are considered to be some of the best waterproof boots ever made, because I don't think anyone makes boots like this anymore. I don't, I've never heard of anyone making boots like this. I've never seen anybody make boots like this. And I honestly didn't know it was even possible before we did this video. And I just love that there's some clear inspiration from the LL Bean boot in a Swedish military boot that is allegedly one of the most deadly boots ever made. And one thing that we don't have time to talk about in this video is how interesting it is how the Swedes solved this problem of protecting boots from the wet environment and trench foot in a completely different way than the US did with their jungle boot. It's like two completely different ends of the spectrum to solve the same problem. So if that's interesting to you, I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison because I really wanna dig into those details and see which one's better and how they solve the same problem in two completely different ways. So if you wanna see that, let me know. And thanks again to the Iron Snail for sending me these boots. Go check his stuff out. I love his content. It's so fun to watch. And go check out his video on this because he has some additional information we didn't cover in this video. So thank you guys for watching and supporting these historical videos. These might be my favorite videos because it really shows like where these boots that most people are wearing today came from and the technology and the innovations that occurred over the last hundred years. It's so fun. It's a, uh, yeah, it's fun enough. So thank you guys for all the support. It means a lot to me. See ya.